In 1588, at the height of the Renaissance, Romelli dropped a bombshell on the nascent world of mechanical engineering with the release of a book containing drawings and descriptions of nearly 200 machines. The book, modestly titled The Various and Ingenious Machines of Captain Agostino Romelli, captured a lifetime of his brilliant work and ideas. This book would go on to be a sort of bestseller and widely copied for over 200 years, with many of the ideas living on even today, some in part foreshadowing modern machines by hundreds of years. Of course, Romelli himself did his share of copying of what came before him, but let's remember this was from a period of time of great secrecy in war and industrial machines, so we owe Romelli a debt for showing us what was often unseen. In a previous video, we've already seen one of his machines, his famous book wheel often dubbed the first tabbed browser. With the book wheel, Romelli is showing off his knowledge of planetary gears, applying them in an interesting and novel way. Though, let's be honest, I think this was more Romelli having fun with what was possible and interesting, maybe rather than what was immediately practical. I think that was an exercise left to the reader. And that's a theme that goes all throughout this book. Of the nearly 200 machines in this book, over half of them are dedicated to raising water, because that was a huge deal in those times. Maybe more than you can even imagine. There are also some remarkable lifting machines, war machines, screw jacks, coffer dams, and more. Romelli really covers a wide variety of trades, even though we give Romelli very little credit today. Even a couple hundred years later, the desire to raise water would be the kick in the pants that invented the steam engine, and we all know how that turned out. Anyway, Romelli comes up with all sorts of crazy ways to move water. Sometimes it seems each page more crazy, though admittedly ingenious, than the last. But as improbable as some of these machines may be, there was one that stopped me in my tracks the moment I saw it. It's this one, Plate 57, one of the many water pumping machines in the book. At first glance, it may seem like just another one of Romelli's brilliant but kind of bonkers machines. But I assure you, dear viewer, it is much more than that and worth sticking around to the end. Okay, let's break it down. How about we bring this machine to life? Notice how the entire building is the machine. This is a common theme in early machines. You don't install a machine into a building. The building itself is the machine. This was obviously installed next to a river or a strong stream, which would power the water wheel and obviously provide the water to be pumped. On the end of the shaft, coming out of the water wheel, there is what is called a lantern pinion. This is a very clever way of baking a small gear in a way that's very strong. The lantern pinion is then driving a crown gear in a horizontal orientation. Notice that Romelli does two important things with this arrangement. Firstly, the lantern pinion is smaller than the crown gear, so there's a gearing reduction which trades slower output speed for increased torque. This would be important in this kind of application because water is really heavy. But this also translates the axis of rotation vertically, and this sets the machine up for its main purpose. The crown gear is directly attached to what I'm going to call a cylinder cam. This is the round, slotted disc set at an angle. This is very similar to something you may know as a swash plate or slant disc, or maybe by another name. On four sides of the cylinder cam, there are followers that ride in the groove. Each of these is attached to a rod that is constrained such that it can move only up and down. Notice how the followers are wheels, and also that the rods are constrained on roller bearings. Romelia is obviously keenly aware of the potential problems with friction and wear and shows you how to reduce it. At the bottom of the rods, we finally get to the pumps. Now here's what's really ingenious about this design and why I believe Romelli thought it was important enough to draw and describe it. Because of the positioning of the rods around the cylinder cam, they are all in slightly different phases of their pumping stroke. This has a great advantage of providing a much smoother output, but also putting a more constant, even load on the machine, which would reduce wear and increase the lifetime. How the pumps work, exactly, is not shown in this drawing. In the text, he basically tells you to go look at other machines, but gives a little detail that the water enters the pumps when they're at the top of their stroke, and the water is pushed into a common chamber as the rods move down with various passive valves to keep everything moving in the right direction. Once the water is in the common chamber under pressure, it can move up a pipe finely defying gravity, and there's a small area for water to pool at the top. Curiously, once the water is pumped up, in Romelli's drawing it actually has a return tube downwards, sending the water back to the bottom, as if he couldn't bear the thought of water going up but not having somewhere to go. I find this really amusing. 
Okay, now we understand how it works. How about I tell you how this impacts you, perhaps even daily? Now, before you continue on your journey, there are a couple of quick items. First, pause the video and go down in the comments and tell me your guess as to which modern machine this morphed into nearly 400 years later. Then, when done here, go check out my Patreon. The wonderful people over there are doing a great job helping me out, and this is the primary way to support the channel. Soon after the release of this video, I'll post one over there for patrons that goes into a lot more detail on Romelli and the incredible and fascinating guy and engineer he was. There's just so much of the context of the story I don't have time for here. At most levels, you get the cool blender model too, so hey, knock yourself out. Okay, you're done? All right, let's go over to the shop. I think you'll find this really cool. Okay, so maybe you know what this is. If you do, go down in the comments and give yourself a pat on the back. So I'm gonna take this apart. Um, there were more parts on this originally, but uh, I had to do some kind of horrible things to get those off that I'm not proud of, you know, not having uh, sometimes all the right tools uh, isn't helpful, but sometimes it leads to some creative results. And um, the important thing is that we're here. All right, I think with those out, we can now separate this and look and see what is inside. So I'm going to take the bottom off. And I believe what we have in here is basically reed valves, if I understand what's sort of supposed to be here. I'm not seeing them, so let's take this top part off. Let's see what's under here. So yeah, I think these are reed valves here. That probably uh, flew it under pressure and come in, yeah, and push, uh, push some sides of that back. It probably comes up through maybe these outside ones here. I'm not entirely not entirely sure, but let's, uh, let's dig. Yeah, for sure. More, more reed valves here. And then when I lift this up, I think we're really going to see this. And this is what should start to look familiar. So here we have five pistons. And I wonder if I push on this. We need to be able to get into that side. I might need to get a screwdriver behind this plate. Just uh, convince it to, uh, to come up. Oh, there we go. I got it off. And so, yeah, on this one, we have pistons on both sides, and as I understand it, the way that this works, there's a high pressure and a low pressure side. And, uh, you know, the fluid comes in, it goes to one of these sides, it's pumped up, it looks like maybe through these holes right here, up at the top, it goes through the one way reed valves into the high uh, pressure side, and then is. Uh, is uh, pumped out. But of course, I want to see what's in the middle here. It looks like maybe there's another break here. It looks like maybe I have to get these these screws out, these bolts, uh, to get to that. So I'm going to try and do that now. After some moderately uh, shameful work over on the bench, I did manage to get this apart. So now I should be able to pull this up. And there we go. Now we can see deep down in this, the swash plate or wobble plate or whatever you want to call it, that Romelli came up with pushing these pistons going up and down. Of course, we don't have the rods. They're directly attached. 
but the principle is exactly the same, just in a much more compact form than uh, what you you know have in Romelli's drawing. It's not building sized, now it's small. And so we ask ourselves, okay, well, what is this? What is, what is this for? Why do we have this and why do we care? Well, this is an AC compressor out of a car. So uh, if you have an AC uh, you know, a compressor in your car, uh, I think chances are very, very high. You have something very similar uh, to this in your car. It's my understanding this is how the vast majority of them are uh, made these days. And um, you ask yourself, well, what's the connection between this and Romelli? How do you know that this is connected to Romelli? And the answer is I don't personally know. But we do know that Romelli's book was incredibly influential for hundreds of years. And we do know that it did have a huge impact on engineering going forward. And I think it's very probable that uh, whoever eventually came up with this probably knew about some machine that, uh, you know, had been built before and before and before and before and probably does go back to Romelli because uh, the similarities are quite striking uh, between these. So next time you get in your car and you turn on the AC, uh, you know, think a little bit uh, about Romelli and uh, what he drew hundreds and hundreds of years ago in 1588 and had no idea that, uh, you know, that would end up being made probably in their billions. You know, who knows? There's, I think, uh, quite a number of cars on the road that have had uh, AC. There's also industrial, uh, you know, compressors that are made uh, in the same way. And um, I think it's very likely uh, that, uh, you know, those are, are uh, traced very similarly. Some of those are a little different. Some of those, the the swash plate, you can actually adjust the angle, which is kind of neat. So as the motor is running, if you have the swash plate, you know, perfectly vertical, then it essentially just turns and does nothing. But um, if you then tilt the disc, uh, the swash plate, you know, then it starts to move the pistons. It's a little bit of a different design. It's where the pistons actually move around rather than the swash plate uh, turning. If you want to know more about these kind of pumps, check out Axial Piston Pumps. As far as I can tell, Romelli gets no credit for these. But we know better, right? If you made it this far, you know you're awesome, and I've earned your subscription, right? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.